I've been getting some questions about winterizing my Merc Cruiser boat, my Merc Cruiser stern drive and four and a half liter uh, V6 engine and why we do what we do. Um, I've posted some videos with the, you know, showing how I do it uh, and I try to follow the uh, service manual to the best I can and there's some places where the service manual doesn't fill in all the gaps. But one of the key elements of doing that is that Mercury asks for a specified uh, fuel mixture. And I've had people wonder, well, you know, why do you need that? Why can't you just put stable in the tank and let her go, right? Run, run some through and it should be fine. So um, there are kind of two things I want to talk about today. One is winterizing and why we do it and, how, and so forth. And secondly is recognize that most boats now in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, have catalytic converters on them uh, very much like our cars do. You know, cars have had catalytic converters since the 1970s. In addition to catalytic converters, these engines have oxygen sensors. So here I have the engine cover, beauty covers off and have it opened up. You know, the, the thing that you'll find is that all of these engines now in this ex up in this area of the exhaust manifolds on both sides have a have a, a, a catalyst, a catalytic converter brick that takes and and filters all the exhaust and and cleans up the pollutants. And then down here you have oxygen sensors that read the oxygen before you go to the catalyst. And then out in the back, there's a, there'll be another set for catalyst engines that uh, measures the oxygen after the catalyst to make sure it's working right. And some engines don't have catalysts in them, but even those today, even if you had a non-catalyst engine, they'll still have oxygen sensors to be concerned about. I mean, these are my opinions about why things are the way they are based on reading Mercury's service information and they don't tell you all the reasons behind it, but I can read what they've presented and what they caution you about. And then I add that to my experience working in the automotive industry as an engineer on engines and, and emission systems. Understand, you know, uh, they're using some of the same logic we would use in, in cases uh, of an automobile. Because you have catalytic converter on your engine and oxygen sensors, you have to be extra careful. Before I dig in, uh, let's, let's back up a step and say, why are we doing what we're doing for winterizing? What's the goal? What's the point? There are a couple of them. One is we drain the water out of the engine so it can't freeze. And we replace it with propylene glycol antifreeze. And the propylene glycol has two things. One is it keeps you from freezing. You buy the material, the proper stuff, the, the proper chemical. Um, has some corrosion additives to keep the block in, in internal parts from corroding. Keeping that in mind, part two is you want to keep corrosion out of the engine cylinders. And if you want to see what corrosion can do to something that's been stored kind of improperly, um, go look at my videos on my 1985 Camaro where you know the cylinders were rusted up and the engine wouldn't turn and it was solid. That's an extreme case, but it happens. So when we winterize, we're trying, we want to coat the insides of the cylinders with something to prevent or reduce the possibilities of corrosion. Um, then we change the oil to get any water out, to get any corrosive things from combustion processes that are in the oil pan so that you don't uh, corrode bearing materials and so forth in the engine. Mercury's intent with the special mix is, is you know, gasoline with stabilizer so it can't break down and with the two-stroke oil is you will feed that through and you will protect the fuel pumps, the fuel pressure regulator, the fuel rails, the injectors. It, that's, that will flow all the way through the system and then be sprayed, in, you know, into your cylinders and, and protect the cylinder walls. That's the whole goal. So the whole thing is about not having things that can freeze and crack and preventing corrosion or deterioration of system components. So that's kind of the broad view. So in the olden days on my 98 Merc Cruiser 305 carbureted, um, you take a 12 ounce aerosol can with a 
spray nozzle on it and you'd spray down the carburetor throats you can go watch my I've got a video on you know on doing that but you could spray fogging oil in it and what happened is the engine would chug and run rough but a bunch of that oil would flow through and end up in the cylinders and coat the cylinder walls so that they would be less likely to corrode and you'd get the intake manifold passages you'd kind of coat everything with this spray fogging oil and then of course you'd put stable in the gas tank and and you'd feed stabilized fuel to the carburetor you change the oil put antifreeze in the block as as I showed and you'd be good now the challenge is on the new engines with port fuel injection and with oxygen sensors and with catalytic converters you got to do something different now mercury starts right off with a warning in the front of the service manual about never spray anything into the inlet of the throttle body not carburetor cleaner not fuel injector cleaner not anything because of the potential of damage to the catalytic converter and or oxygen sensor. On this engine the air intake is in the back and mercury will caution you never to spray anything in that inlet. If you need to like clean fuel injectors uh, you would need to you, you would need to put something in the fuel and run it through the system so that the system operates normally with that cleaner in it. And I'm not recommending that you do that, but just, just be aware that that's how that should work. And, you know, an oxygen sensor looks like, um, it sort of resembles a big spark plug, but it has a ceramic element on the end that sticks down into the exhaust stream. And that element uh, changes voltage depending on whether the mixture is rich or lean, whether you have excess oxygen or not enough. And those things are very sensitive. One, they can be poisoned by certain chemicals. Uh, silicone is really bad. Um, I understand fiberglass isn't much better, fi fiberglass dust, out of which you get in boats if you're not careful. Uh, but you can, different chemicals will poison the oxygen sensor and cause it not to work. And if it doesn't work, you'll get a check engine warning or a, 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 an engine fault and you'll have to get it replaced. Second is the catalytic converter. and Catalytic converters in general, cars or boats, doesn't matter, are very, very sensitive to um, excess hydrocarbons in the exhaust stream. And hydrocarbon is gasoline, hydrocarbon is oil, it's any liquid fuel that will burn. And what the catalyst does is, again, I've got a video out there on what a three-way catalytic converter looks like and what it does. But for today, uh, the main section that you're worried about is there's something called an oxidation catalyst and its mission is to take that unburned hydrocarbon and oxidize it into carbon dioxide and water. And as it does that, it releases heat, just like if you're burning the same fuel in the engine. The catalyst is designed to deal with excess emissions out of the cylinders in the engine as it's running, but if you overload it with too much fuel, it will get really hot and the temperatures in a catalyst can be 1500 to 2000 degrees, maybe beyond, and it's a ceramic. You'll literally melt the ceramic and destroy the catalyst. And the easiest way to do that is to have a misfiring engine. That's why you'll see frequently see warnings about you know, preventing misfire. Well, if you spray fogging oil into one of these things, you're going to create misfire, one, and two, you're going to send extra unburned fuel down into the exhaust and the catalyst will get get hot really fast. So how do you fix that? I mean I gotta figure that you know the engineers on these boats uh, you know they recognized how we did things in the years past. How do you how do you make that work right? What can you do? Well they came up with this special mix and you know the special mix is two-stroke oil and I use Mercury's own synthetic blend. That's really what they recommend their Premium Plus. And let me take a second and say, um, I don't work for Mercury. I have no stock in Mercury. I have no investment in Mercury. I'm, but I've learned over years is that the manufacturer often knows more than third parties. Third party two-stroke oils may be great. But in this particular case where you're worried about your catalyst, I go buy Mercury's own product because I know it works, I know they've tested it, and I know it won't damage my system. 
So that one I buy. And I'm um, off the top of my head, I think the mix is 12 ounces of oil to a gallon. It's, it's like 10 to 1. It's a, pretty th it's a pretty thick mix. And then you add stabilizer in that. So now you go, you're going to go feed that to the engine. Um, Mercury has obviously, based on their comments and recommendations, has obviously tested this and found that it's good. Now, why do, why do I think it's good? Recognize what you're doing. You're taking a separate fuel supply and feeding it in. The two-stroke oil is designed to burn properly and burn clean. You're worried about having the right fuel mixture, air-fuel ratio, so that you don't hurt the catalyst. You don't want it too rich or you don't want it too lean so that it's misfiring. So by feeding this mixture into the engine, the engine computer and the oxygen sensors can read what it sees. It reads the oxygen and the exhaust. It adjusts the fuel mixture to make sure the engine runs. You can hear when you do this, you can hear that it runs a little differently. But it's still running at a normal air fuel ratio and it's going to protect itself. And so that's really why you want to do it. Now, I'm going to go back one more time and say catalytic converters are also sensitive to poisoning. And you have to watch what oils you use because of the additives in the oil. In the oil. Um, even normal crankcase oil, right? My older boat uses this one, which is four-stroke 25W40 conventional mineral oil with additives, but this is Mercury's oil, and they say it's great. You're allowed to use that in this engine, but it's actually recommended that you use this one, which is the synthetic blend, because the synthetic blend has, um, has a different set of additives to it, and it's better for your catalytic converter and to keep from poisoning it, because Catalysts, and we learned this years ago in, in automobiles, uh, the additives, the anti-wear additives in the oil, will, um, the phosphorus and the zinc in particular, some of these metal compounds, um, will coat the catalyst and cause it not to function properly and not to clean up emissions, which is what it's there for. So again, if I buy mercury's two-stroke oil, I know that they're confident that the additive package won't either poison the oxygen sensor or poison the catalyst. Now beyond that, if you want to see what a catalyst looks like, here I'll show you a picture. This is one out of my Camaro, and you can see the holes in the honey, uh, called honeycomb in the ceramic brick. It's a good example. Um, next, here's a picture of an oxygen sensor, and you can see the element. The element is sensitive to, to impurities like silicone. It's also sensitive to things like liquid coming out of the cylinder. So like when we were spraying fogging oil, if you got a big slug of fogging oil and it hit that sensor, it could thermally shock it and cause it to crack. And again, you'd have a bad oxygen sensor. So I hope, I hope that helps answer the question. You know, you really want to do the, you really want to take care with the winterizing to protect your catalyst and protect your oxygen sensor so that you don't have trouble running next season and protect your engine by making sure that the cylinder walls are, are coated as mercury would like. I hope that helps. That's all for now.